Hello, uh, welcome back to Sterling Armory Sword Talk. Uh, I, I'm actually over in Edinburgh at the moment, and uh, I forgot what episode this is. I think this is episode tw uh, 11 or 12 or 13, um, but we still wanted to have Sword Talk going on. So uh, what we're going to do today is go over basically where, uh, where we're at uh, after Combat Con and, and how much fun Combat Con was. And uh, so before we go too further, let's uh, bring everybody on. I'm not controlling it this time, so. <laughs> um, so, uh, real quick, um, if you're new to Sword Talk, uh, we're just a bunch of nerds who drink a lot of drink and talk about swords and all sorts of topics on swords. And and uh, so for today, what we're going to do is um, we don't have a set topic, so we're just going to start with Combat Con, how much fun it was. And then Josh and I were there, uh, Colton and Thomas were not. Um, and then we'll go. So before we start any of that, we start with uh, introductions. Uh, so Thomas, you want to start? Sure. So uh, I'm Thomas, as ever. Uh, I will be in control of the stream today because uh, we don't trust Chris. And as always, you can never find me anywhere except for on Facebook and the Sterling page. And today I am drinking out of my nice collectible NASA glass. Uh, oh, a, I found a strawberry vodka rose water that's sugar free. And it's dangerous. Oh. Um, yeah, it's fancy. Hold on, I'll go to the bottle. Say that again. It's uh, Say it this... hold on, if I can get the lighting off of it. And if I'm delayed, let me... strawberry, what? There we go. There you go. So it's strawberry and rose infused Smirnoff sugar free vodka. So you're drinking like. No, I've got it mixed with a soda club soda, so that way it's got something more than just booze in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty good. Colton. Oh yeah, so uh, Colton from Copperthorn Customs. I am. I'm just having a shock top today because it's still four o'clock, and I got stuff to do after this. So that's me. <laughs> awesome. Nice. What do you have to do? Working in the shop. What? Are you working in the shop? Oh, we gotta gotta go with the wife and kids out doing some stuff after this. Oh. So, gotcha, gotcha. Yep. The shop top goes good with heavy machinery. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it does. <laughs> Josh, you up? I'm War Bear. I'm in America. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I am drinking Gold Peak Sweet Tea from the Seven Eleven. Um, yeah, just because I have to stay focused right after this, I have to run to the gym, and then I have a shit ton of leather work to dye uh, all kinds of different colors, so I don't want to get too comfortable. Uh, I can be reached at Dark Art. Nope. Aha! Uh, I switched it. I am now on Instagram as Warbear underscore Armory, uh, so find me on Instagram there, and uh, Facebook is Joshua Von Warbear and DarkArtDesign.com. Unless the spammers have taken me down yet, I'm not sure. I keep getting emails, hmm. and I refuse to look at it anymore. Does the old Instagram link still work, though, or no? No, no. We'll have to hmm. update our all the links then, so we get the yeah. right ones. In. Yeah, so I have to do the same thing for the Evermore booth. It turns out the QR code also changed. So, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a is what it is. Whatever. Modern problems. Um, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I'm Chris. Uh, you can find me at Sterling Armory, um, and then uh, Instagram Sterling Armory, and then obviously YouTube. If you if you're watching us here, you're here. And uh, you can't find it in America right now. Yeah, and not in America at the moment. Uh, so after yeah. Combat Con, uh, you notice my background is a bit different. Um, after Combat Con, I, I'm on a nice trip uh, here to, to Edinburgh, and Scotland. I went down to Leeds uh, was it yesterday, two days ago. Uh, went down to Leeds for a bit at the Royal Armories. Got a chance to do some behind the scenes stuff, which was cool. Uh, and then over to Dublin Friday. So a couple days from now. Over to Dublin. Nice. And uh, yeah, lots of drinks. So, I, you know, I'm a big mead guy, right? I and mean, that's most of what we drink here. Nobody here, at least in the local household here, knew what mead was. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Impossible. But how do you not know what mead is? So down in Leeds, uh, so and this is the first one I'm drinking today. So down in Leeds, uh, they actually have, can you guys see that? 
Yeah. So it's a yeah. tournament mead. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is what they do for joust events and stuff. Uh, but it's a great mead with uh, ginger, so I introduced them to that. Um, but then they do have a lot locally. Uh, so actually, this isn't local, right? This is from Linda's Farm down in England. So this is another, and we don't get this in the States, so I'm going to try to find it. Um, yeah, this is way cooler than anything I've seen. Yeah. 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 Um, we also tried, how do you say this one? Moniac. So then we have Moniac. So this is all at a local place in Edinburgh. Huh. Um, but then the best drink of all that I found, also from Edinburgh Castle, and I got to find this in the U.S., is this Stag's Breath. Uh, it's a whiskey honey mix. And Ooh. I think it not. Sounds good. Yeah. Oh, there goes the Wi-Fi. Oh, no. <laughs> and, and I'm drinking out of my fun uh, cup that I got, you know, to come over. Uh, much appreciated in the UK. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to uh, to Beaver, Utah, for uh, <laughs> really, really putting us up there for that one gas stop on the way to Vegas. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Combat Con, uh, Combat Con was amazing this year. We had a great oh, yeah. booth. Uh, oh, we should ask Chad to join. Um, so we booted uh, with Chad from Chad Makes. Uh, he just posted today. Um, he did. A, he had a great time at Combat Con as well. And um, yeah, uh, a couple surprises this year. Um, so like, usually for me, uh, I'll make as much as I can make for Combat Con. And usually, like the last two times, the higher end stuff actually didn't go uh, quickly. It went eventually, but usually the the stuff that's lower price went really fast usually on the first day. And then this year, all the high-end pieces went within, what, a matter of hours on the, on the first day. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah. A couple of them before we even opened, like in two hours before we opened. In fact, my two highest end, well, no. no. So the highest end one went later that day, but the other one just prior to that went before we opened. Hmm. Right. Yeah. As well as yeah. Colton uh, Sword. The highest end one, yeah, also went immediately. The same buyer. Nice. Too. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Um, uh, the, the the con seemed to be run. I don't know. It felt more smooth this time. Um, well, sure. it was smooth last time. Well, so I can't really say that. Um, but it was just an overall great uh, convention, and uh, I think we did pretty well. Hanging out with Mike and Brian, and you know, everyone is always the best time. Yeah. So that was that was definitely one of my highlights. Uh, Hanging out with uh, with Michael Sigmund and Brian Koontz and uh, their respective uh, wives, um, yeah, they're just a hoot to be around. They're so they're so oh, so freaking funny. We have to come up with uh, so Excuse so the whole you, uh, the whole weekend we were doing small pranks on each other's booths. Yes, <laughs> a prank war has been started that we have to oh, step man. the game up on. It started with me walking over. And I had, we have some business cards. Some of you guys got them. And, uh, Which I didn't know you started the prank war. I was like, oh, you <laughs> bastards at Albion. I'm going to get you. Chris <laughs> started it. Oh, uh, that makes sense. I'm sorry. But I'm still <laughs> going to get you. With these magnetic business cards. And just put some on their blade. <laughs> <laughs> Sterling armor. And uh, this is, you know, it was fun. And then Brian comes over. And he, Josh, you can tell him. I think he probably felt better than me. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Brian comes over and just like, out of like a money Python skit, a la the um, the two guards at the Swamp Castle, just like as the guys like messing around in the background, Brian just comes over and goes, puts a business card of his of his on our table, walks like four inches, does another one, does a stack of them, and then just keeps doing it. And then he comes over to my phone pouches and opens the phone pouches and starts sticking his business card in there, <laughs> all while like staring me down the entire time. <laughs> I was like, never, never losing eye contact. Either. Never yeah. losing eye contact. There was, there was, and then, then after that, there was them at their booth, and I walked over, and there was a big stanchion, like a pylon, right beside their booth, and I looked over on the side like that, out of it, made sure they saw me. And then I, you know, went back on the pylon and then five feet over my big hairy gorilla arm comes up and puts down a business card and then comes up again somewhere else, puts it up. And then I scurry away on all fours like a, like an ape. It's a, uh, you know, we had a great time. It was really fun. The, uh, 
half the reason I go to Combat Con is just to goof off with other sword nerds. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, those guys yeah. are really great. Probably more than half, right? <laughs> so, so well, yeah, fun. I was just thinking, like, how many equal parts of Vegas is there? There's obviously yeah. friendship, and then there's the food, yeah. and then selling swords. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah more than half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah okay. when uh, good, I competed for the first time too, um, which was fun. Uh, not surprising. So my intent was to do the first round cut with my own swords and then go back to the booth because I figured I'd be out because there was a lot of really good cutters there. And uh, yeah, I ended up going back every round because I kept getting in first. Uh, but yeah, You were cool. underplaying this. I watched the video. You were like on point with everything you did, but you still had your like mannerisms through all of it. You got all yeah. these like, you know, really good cutters, but they're all like their their gear, they're wearing tight clothes. And there comes Chris in a polo and cargo <laughs> shorts like, what's up, businessman Chris here. Yeah. <laughs> String and sword. It looks hat. like he, it looks like Chris just came off the street and he's like, hey, never been here before. What's yeah. all this? Oh, really that seems cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you know this, Chris, uh, but Combat Con has recalled some of the results of the cutting competition, uh, like adding different footage. It seems that when they they paused certain frames uh, while you're cutting red laser beams from a space and satellite are seen going through the Tommy mats. So they're on you, big guy. <laughs> yeah, you know. Another no, war bear factoid of the day. Nope. Well, we used. Do, for, for the good of everyone um, that competed, we should put the link to the to the oh. competition in the description, like the one that was on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so we'll put a link to it down below. Yeah, it's supposed it to. It was a really uh, fun competition to watch. Like, you know, yeah. uh, obviously, I'm nursemaid to our booth because Chris is going <laughs> out and being super popular and great, and I'm like, cool, I'll stay here. Um, anytime I got a chance to look, the, to look, I I run out to the competition grounds and see the people cutting, and oh, it was just yeah. such a sight to see. And then everybody fighting each other in the longsword tournaments and saber. Oh, it was really awesome. I would say that was the only, yeah, that was the only downside. So the last, the time, the way we were, it was set up last time, we could watch it from our booth almost, whereas we couldn't yeah. do that. Yeah, that was. I wish that was a little different, but you know, there's only so much space there. Right. Um, yeah, they closed everything yeah. off, which is fine because we didn't hear the bullwhip class. We were right next to the bullwhip class next year. Oh, yeah, it was just yeah. <laughs> gunshots going off left and right, trying to make sales and. Oh, yeah, this sort of. <laughs> yeah yep. okay but yeah yeah, was, yeah they posted the footage pretty quick uh phil from um uh phil martin he does a lot of cutting videos online and uh he was mm -hmm. the main. and uh he yeah. kind of sent the videos and that's how i saw them and uh we had a couple guys from a florida group um with john and i, and I feel bad i pronounced his name wrong i think it's not or not I, apologies but i keep messing that up I, I know i asked him a couple times at, at the event he told me but I, I was running around like crazy and I forgot, but he posted or he, he took some video as well. That looks really good. And he's awesome. I'm hoping uh, that him, uh, they want to do a cutting class and, and like our, our own like cutting thing in Florida. So all the Florida HEMA groups would converge in Orlando, maybe. That'd be cool. And do a couple of days cool. or a day. Okay. So that could be fun. Um, yeah. But yeah. So yeah, Combat Con was awesome. And, and, uh, and it seems like you guys have been working on a bunch of blades after. I've been here traveling, so, um, but I've been yeah. seeing them. So, Josh, you pumped out a bunch of blades, and Colton, you're at your new shops up and going? Yeah, I mean, like, it's mostly going. Everything's been really slow going because all the equipment's in, it's all hooked up, but just I'm fine tuning everything as I go up, throw something in the uh, vice, and just like, oh, that's not quite straight, or got to re, you know, just kind of resituating everything as i'm moving forward so mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. been a it's been a process but it's it's starting to come together so a couple blades you're, done you're so your equipment's pretty large compared to ours so you're able to get it all in there yep <laughs> nice yeah. Walking, yeah are you just like it's, uh that's <laughs> yeah. walking i hang from the ceiling no. and they just yeah <laughs> he's on a police system right. yes <laughs> Yeah, I went and visited his shop, and yeah, he, you're right. There's there's very little dedicated space uh, to movement. Most of it is just turning. Like if I don't think you could have two people working in that shop 
or whatsoever. Not uh, um, not effectively. And the power yeah. there, honestly, if you start running two of those big machines at the same time, it'll probably just start blowing it'll, breakers. So right, right, yeah. It definitely makes you appreciate what space you've had before oh, and what gosh, space yeah. you definitely need next time. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's been going good though. So we shall see. Just keep moving yeah. forward. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. And Josh, you've been, uh, you're working a film project right now? Uh, yeah. Uh, so I got back from Vegas. Vegas was wild just because, uh, you know, uh, I was making as much stuff as I could. And then Fields popped up on a Monday and um, we just sat in a making stuff. And I right away got kind of like a head cold and it was just like, ah, oh, crap. And worked through it as best as I can while Chris caught it just basically directly after I did. Um, and then we worked through and then due to whatever confusion looking around, we're like, cool, we get out of combat con Sunday. Oh hell fields has to be at the airport at 3 AM, uh, in Salt Lake city, uh, that night slash Monday morning. So, uh, uh -huh. we, we got out of the con early cause it's combat con. So on Sunday, everybody's just kind of like, you know, goofing off and, most people just leave early just because we got to get a jump on the week. Um, so we made that drive. We got back to Utah or to Orem, Salt Lake City around 1130 midnight. Got a few hours of sleep. Dropped fields off at 3. Got home by 3.30. I took another nap and then woke up and immediately started working on chest armor for a film project that was due Tuesday morning. Um, got that done at like 10 at night. Went to sleep. Delivered the armor. Delivered the swords and everything. Um and then tried to sleep the next day and then immediately hooked up a shoot for that Thursday, which was more swords, more uh, more uh, armor and crap. And then had Evermore Friday and Saturday. And then Sunday, I slept the entire day. And then Monday, uh, what you call it, I, I, I woke up like at around noon and then just laid in bed till like 3 p.m. watching movies and just like trying to get a hold of on it. And now I'm back to it with like, crap, I got to make more swords. Most of my yeah. stock is like, you see my rack background. It's like light 15 swords it used to be yeah. like every, every hollow. And then in the middle, every riser had a sword too. So I'm a, uh, I'm now destitute and barren of product. So I'm just like <laughs> busting ass yesterday and today and tomorrow trying to make it up for evermore, which is uh Friday night. Yeah. Well, awesome. That sounds, I mean, that's a good that's problem, a good problem to, have. to have. Yeah, Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a problem. I never thought I would have, uh, you know, I, I, I figured it'd be like, Oh, I'm, hopefully I get to retire after working a bullshit job for forever. And now I'm like, I'm so busy just, you know, being unemployed, doing things that I like that it's, it's some of the happiest news I've ever gotten in my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, well, now we're actually unsure of our next big event because uh, originally it was going to be Sarasota. Well, it still will be Sarasota in November. There is now Salt Lake City. Uh, sort of. Yep. Yeah, sort of. In, in the, was it end of October or middle of October? I can't remember. We might be you there. sure it's not November? Um, let's see. I thought it was October. I'm going to look it up really quick just to get confirmation on it. I'll make that. Yeah, look we're it up. Just traveling. Because so I sure got my event uh, evermore goes till mid August, late August, and then right after that, I will be um, at the Renaissance Fair in Timpanagas, uh in Lehigh, Utah. Okay. And, uh, I hope that then for yeah. this one. So that's gonna be fun. It's gonna be just a Friday and Saturday. And you're right, uh, October 14th and 15th will right. be the Salt Lake Open. So yeah, whoo, super might be busy. The next we're all together now. Sadly, there's no cutting at this tournament, so it's just <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but we might have a booth there. Um, and then uh, we also found out there is a cutting tournament. It's a dedicated cutting tournament um, in Phoenix. Excuse me, in Phoenix uh, in mm. January. Before we usually do Hogtown Medieval Fair in Florida uh, at the end of January. So this is just before that. So our calendar is. Getting pretty booked uh, as far as shows go, which is a good thing. Um, right. We just I just make a lot of more, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. so it should be good. Um, yeah. So yeah. Any more uh, 
I'm trying to think of other stuff from Combat Con. Combat Con, there was so much stuff. Like I'm, I'm actually having a hard time remembering everything. So. Oh man, all the all those ham croissants uh, and bacon and smoked turkey bagels that we were having for that little shop were so good. Did you know oh, bacon? Man. Huh? Did you know bacon in the UK is well, at least in Scotland is different. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh. If you do, it's little, right? Or it's like. Shaved no, ham or something like that. Yeah. yeah, it's almost ham more than it is. Uh, so right. they call our bacon. Is that what they call? Crispy? Yeah. Call it crap. Oh, we call it streaky bacon. That's the name of American bacon. <laughs> so, in, in Georgia, uh, they call it pig ass. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, you're right. Uh, but it's really good. Um, so, yeah, so I had lots of eggs and bacon in Vegas, and now I'm having lots of it here in the UK. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so for real though, real talk. Are you in the middle of negotiating uh, a seizure of a castle from Scotland so yeah. we can move Sterling Army and all of us there? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, um, yeah, I've definitely been keeping my eyes open. There's lots of random, abandoned, massive buildings all over the place. Ooh. Yeah, we drove to Leeds, and it was a uh, four-hour, yeah, four-hour drive south of here. I, I thought it was much closer. But nope, four hours. So I was actually late to my event in, in Leeds, and I didn't do it. So, so I just uh, Hannah and I hung out in the uh, basically did the whole museum, and then we got to go yeah. behind the scenes. Uh, the curators there uh, were very welcoming. Um, I hadn't met him before. Um, I'm, apologies, I'm blanking on his name right now, um, and it's on my phone, which I'm like, which I can't pull it up. Um, but he was super awesome and, and helped us out. Keith, yeah, Keith Down. Sorry for Keith if you're watching. Um, but yeah, he, he pulls for his science knowledge, not for his name taking. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I got to measure some pieces that I want to look at. And, uh, you know, we use any historical data we can to help better guide all of our you know, pieces that we make. So, um, kind of gathering a, a, uh, a database of original pieces and their measurements, which is great. Um, the other cool thing, when I was down there, so they had some miniatures, which they, I don't remember seeing before. Maybe they had them before. Ooh. On um, this one, some of you guys might recognize this one. Oh. Really? Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, oh. So it's a miniature, but it's actually a very, very detailed miniature. Oh. Of, uh, Henry Who makes VIII. them? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't say. So oh. someone... The Royal Army is coming. But they got the fuller right. They got, I mean, even in the miniature, they got everything right. They got the. Yeah. So this is Henry the Ace Messer, um, you know, with, with the uh, snaked. Oh, here we go. <laughs> the snaked uh, guard. And I've always wanted to make this one. And uh, now I actually have a 3D piece to, to look at when I want, oh. <laughs> if I want to make this one uh, exact. So. I'm sure there's some things that it's off on, obviously, because it's a miniature, but I thought it was super cool, and uh, so I grabbed it. And then uh, I know a lot of, so our local um, groups, our local HEMA groups, haven't do dove into the I-33 sword and buckler stuff yet, but because uh, they, they don't know how to translate it. <laughs> so, so I got the book that is the translation for all that. It's a pretty darn oh. thick book. Oh, cool. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, and it, it basically it takes... Uh, the manuscript, and as an example, and goes, you know, this is the actual manuscript, and then it translates, or it tells you what it says, and then translates it for you. Uh, now, the downside is, is it is translated by somebody, so to check that translation, you know, it's good to, to I was talking with a couple of human instructors in Florida saying, hey, you know, yeah. let's actually hear what they're saying and see if it makes sense, if the translation's right, so we can kind of confirm it, kind of. Um, you know, if it makes sense, if it doesn't make sense, then we might think it's translated off. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty exciting. And Sword and Buckler, Josh, I don't know if you saw, but at Combat Con, uh, Sword and Buckler was huge. I think probably, yeah, yeah. Or it's probably the biggest event. It might be, Rapier might be bigger, but Sword and Buckler is getting pretty large. So I thought that was so cool. It, uh, interestingly enough, it looks like Depeka makes those miniatures. Oh, do they really? <laughs> yeah. They can do many good. Look at that. Yeah, they've got a few of them. Uh, you can get them at thenightshop.com. 
Uh, special shout out to Nightshot.com from Royal Armory's yeah. Miniature Swords. But yeah, that's pretty rad. Yeah, I um, recommend them. 20, 20, 30 bucks or 30 bucks a pop. That looks pretty yeah, rad. Not at all. This is 30. Really cool. Yeah, there's, there's, there's four, four swords and one knight helmet. And uh, hmm. God, my, I might order them. <laughs> they look really cool. It'd be something yeah. cool just to have on the that's mantle. Not a bad price yeah. at all. Yeah. 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 I there, but I didn't recognize the what what the piece it was based on was, so I didn't get it. But this one, they I have knew. a they have the Tudor long sword, uh, the Ryven hilt sword, uh, the English arming sword, and then the Henry the Eighth. Yeah, um, and also an English great helm and and arming sword. Ooh, so it comes with a helmet and an arming sword. Ooh. Yeah, gravity. <laughs> right. And you know, yeah. here I can fly at home uh on my carry-on, but uh uh you know, it's not a full size sword, so you don't have to worry about it. Um yeah. But yeah, I'm excited. That's it's, it's pretty sweet. Uh didn't expect to come home with anything but you know, shirts and you know, yeah. I love beef. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And then uh in so we went to Sterling and then the Wallace uh so Sterling Castle. And then the Wallace Monument, which is super awesome. Uh, the Wallace Sword, I had, I've always seen it in images. I think everybody here has seen it. Yes. Um, but, you know, I, I got to. It's in a case in a position where you can get around it. Yeah. And um, yeah, clearly the handle is probably 16th century, maybe even later. Um, but the blade looks. I was thinking it was going to look just bad all the way down its thickness and everything, but it actually looks decent. So, yeah, might be 13th century, maybe, uh, <laughs> is it, or maybe early 14th, I should say. Uh, so 1305 ish, I think is what they were dating it at. Um, and that seems right. So, but now the, uh, now the, the question is, is it's probably they think it was probably a ceremonial piece, nothing that he actually used, which makes sense because there's no damage on it really. You know, so there's no Vegas review. Um yeah. and I know so cool. Yeah. And I read a while ago that when they did metallurgy on it, it is three different blades merged into one, so it's three different big chunks of metal. And that's huh. the story it was made from three different English knights blades. So interesting. Kinda cool. That's pretty uh, cool. Yeah. And then over at Sterling, um, so the one thing that was a little different uh, in both Sterling and Edinburgh, Edinburgh compared to, like, say, uh, compared to, um, like, either Windsor down in, in London or or the Tower of London, is that these kind of focus on later time periods. Um, so, like, all the swords and collections are usually later, so 17th, 18th century, which was surprising to me because um, the castles themselves stay way back older. Um, but there were a few pretty cool claymores they had intact. They had some Viking pieces intact uh, uh, in terms of older time periods. So I got a lot of images. So if you're on our Facebook page, I actually have, um, I, I got to double check to make sure it's updated, but we have whole collections of images from the Met, from the Royal Armories, including I'll be adding to that. Um, and then we have the Wallace collection from visits there. Uh, and now we'll have, we'll add to that uh, Edinburgh Castle, Sterling Castle, um, and what am I missing? Oh, we did the the museum, uh, the museum of National Museum of Scotland. There we go. So the National Museum of Scotland had probably the most arms and armor uh, in this area, uh, or even more so than the castles did. And uh, they mm -hmm. had some pretty good pieces going all the way back to the Egyptian and Greek times. So that was oh cool. Lots of bronze uh, weapons here. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah, that's been my trip, and then uh, I have no idea what I'm going to be seeing in Ireland. <laughs> so hopefully, I get some more there. I'm actually hoping to do. Somebody asked me uh, on the forums to get some images of some ring hilts, um, but that's at the National Irish Museum, and it seems mm -hmm. to be closed every time I'm in Dublin. So <laughs> fingers crossed, I can get there. I don't. I don't know if I'll be able to. Right. Um, but the ring hilts, you know. Uh, actually, I was going to say that earlier at Combat Con. My ring hilts both sold within an hour, and nice. the first hour, you know, and the same thing happened last time. So people at Combat Con love Irish open yeah. swords. Irish pommels. I mean, oh, I think yeah. everybody loves those. So yeah, I'm just gonna bring a bunch next time. Um, make a lot more. Um, but yeah, up there in my favorite. So they do make a nice sandaling blade. I'll say that your whole blade has to be a lot for that pommel. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, quick question on that. So. 
you know, last last year the big thing was everyone was asking us for dagger checkers, dagger checkers. I know we made yeah. a bunch. Did we sell them all? So yeah, so <laughs> we sold. Uh, we sold a lot. I I, I made. 15 daggers uh, and I didn't get to make six. I was going to bring like 23 daggers and I brought, I, I think I brought like 15 or 16 total and um, just was like, I can't, I can't do the rest of them. And I think I came back with five or six. So we did good, sell yeah. quite a bit of daggers. Uh, so I, yeah, I'm glad I, sure, I brought I'm them. Sure it wasn't that case of like, you know, one year that demands this. So we make right. that thing and then nobody yeah. buys that thing. And you're like, well, so, okay, cool. It seems like if yeah. that's what they want, then that's um, what they're going to buy when we bring I, extra their patient. I'm finding last year, last year, I'll say, and Chris, you could you can confirm or deny this. Um, uh, last year, people seemed very reserved about what they were purchasing, mm -hmm. um, and there was a lot less people. Um, it, it felt like anyway, uh, because it was like, you know, the the COVID, COVID uh, scare. Yeah, like, like uh, this year, like there were, I feel like there was a lot more people that came out and a lot of more people wanted to buy stuff. Good. Yeah. This was their biggest audience. I mean, they broke records before, even before opening day, right? With ticket sale. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll um, go ahead and take credit then. <laughs> uh, Albion. Albion brought a Clooney. Oh, I got to hold the Clooney finally. <laughs> it's That's much nice. smaller than I thought it was going to be for some reason. I, I I've seen the measurements, I've read the measurements, and uh, even still looking on the table, I was like, "Whoa, is that a Clooney?" And yeah, it's a Clooney. Oh, pick it up. That's way smaller. It's still a beautiful, beautiful sword. Yeah, it is. Looks actually, like it would be a pain in the ass to make a scabbard for it, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, didn't he? Oh no, he didn't have one for that. I keep mixing up the Clooney and that other one that he had the scabbard there for. Uh, yeah, um, I, I, I don't remember what that one was called. So what? what Kingmaker was it a Kingmaker? No, no, no. It was the two hander or the hand and half. Um, so it's a weird one. It starts with L J something. I can't pronounce it. No idea. Lub I call it the Lub Dub. Uh, yeah. But that's <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, one of the pieces at the Royal Armory that I got a chance uh, to hold. And study actually was a piece. It's not similar to the Clooney, but it's the same rough size as, as the Clooney. Oh, right. But it was over four pounds. <laughs> so, Holy shit. Yeah, it was a beastie blade. And it had the mm -hmm. uh, Ricasso with the three fullers in the Ricasso. Sure. And the one long center fuller. And uh, but yeah, that blade, it, it was thick. It was 0.3 thick, uh, almost the whole length of the blade. And then it oh, pistol yeah. tapered at the end a little bit. But it was a That's beefy crazy. man. Yeah, so Delton version of that, but mm -hmm. Delton because so, this is about half the weight. <laughs> so yeah, right. Um, so yeah, it's just crazy how you know when you see a sword two dimensionally, you, you get an idea yeah. of what it's going to be, and then you see it three dimensionally, like whoa, that's way different than what I thought. Um, right. And the cool thing, the sword looked like it wasn't finished, um, so. Because the pommel peen wasn't even peened over yet, you could slide the pommel off because they hadn't peened it yet. So oh. it looked like it looked like it was in the process of being made and then got discarded, or or, or maybe the shop got on fire or something. Because there was maybe some burn. Do you think that's why it's so heavy? Is because they didn't start the distal taper, or they didn't finish distal tapering it? Uh, I mean, the guard was on, was seated on it. Um, hmm. so. I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't think so. Uh, it looked like Here. a pretty finished piece, but uh, uh, in terms of just ready to be assembled, but yeah, it just wasn't. Hmm. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, um, we also saw some. The Royal Army has changed around some some of their displays, uh, and uh, so I know Colton liked uh, some Lord of Rings pieces, and oh yeah, they had Boromir sword out because they didn't have that out last time I was there. But they had uh, thought it was the original because the last time I was there, they did have the original uh, Strider's blade. Hmm. Uh, 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 what's the one from the Hobbit? The big uh, dragon tooth handle one. The big fashion. Oh. Um, I forgot the name of it. But they had yeah, there, the original fighter and. But they had, anyways continue. Yeah, I can't remember. but uh, so this time they had. Uh, they weren't the original pieces, but they were still made by Peter. So technically. Their original so original. Yeah. Yeah. Or so Chris. Or Chris. Or Chris. There you go. Uh, yeah. Or Chris. Yeah. 
my brain um, was just like, oh, I know this. Uh, <laughs> same, same. My brain was breaking on that. Um, but yeah, so they had Boromir's out this time, and uh, next to Strider's sword, and then a little uh, uh, sting was there as well. So the last time that the last thing I saw was the one that they, they had to scale to the actor. So it was, the sting was huge, whereas this was the one that that was post scale. So it was a smaller yeah. piece. Um, but yeah, they were pretty cool. Boromir's sword looked really awesome. So I sent those to Colton. I thought Boromir, for some reason, I thought Boromir's sword had two fullers in it uh, per side, but no, it's just one big wide fuller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know that. And did you see the image I sent you where the fuller terminates before it yeah. goes? I was like, <laughs> hiding there. <laughs> yeah, it definitely. Well, makes sense because it's so wide. Um, mm -hmm. So I wanted to image of that for you. Um, but yeah. I'm so, definitely going to have to make one of those. Yeah, the time is here. Yeah, uh, and then uh, it is. Thomas, how you doing over there in uh, uh, moved, Kentucky, you know? Kentucky, or whatever it is? <laughs> uh, so I'm uh, I'm still house hunting, finding a place to live. Um, there's a lot of great property. It's just a matter of finding the right one, right? Because you know, yeah. I intend to live there. I don't want it to be crap. But uh, I. Did pick up a 3D resin printer that I'm going to play around with, and it's funny you were talking oh. about ranchers. I was actually thinking about using that to print out some design ideas, seeing like using it kind of like as a guide for mm. when I'm doing cutting and stuff, just to kind of like for handle shapes and so forth. Maybe not replacing the because I know we've talked about using 3D prints for handle material before. Maybe not going that far, but at least using it as kind of like here's the general shape that I want. Now I just have to copy it instead of like doing it all from my brain, which is a pile of mush so <laughs> but uh it's great up here man like it's like your quintessential small town and like everyone knows your name unfortunately even though i've never met them before it's awesome um you know the cia is really strong out here <laughs> but no, no no it's really cool uh everyone's really nice the area is awesome um you know the, <laughs> these people don't know what rain is though um and they're not made for it it's like sprinkles out here and it floods and everyone loses their mind. I'm like, I, this isn't even like, this isn't even a Wednesday for me, man. This is nothing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it's like heat here in Scotland. They don't know what heat is. Yeah. So That's the other thing. My favorite is like, you see him wearing a flannel shirt. I'm wearing like flannel and jeans and going like, it's a nice day out. Meanwhile, guys are dressed like Josh, like melting. I'm just <laughs> like, you're, you're right, man. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, awesome. Yeah, I hope you, uh, you know, if you need any help, get the set up, you know, you know, reach out absolutely yeah once i once i settle in because you know my intention is that uh with my new work and everything that i'll be in sarasota with you at least for a couple weeks and i might actually see josh sometime soonish because i've got work out there that i gotta go do but uh That'd be awesome i'm actually yeah. i've been looking at heading up to chicago soon and checking out the art institute up there because they have a pretty yeah. big arms and armor museum so i definitely want to check that out see the pieces they've got up there you know yeah very really just start Start being like a mini you, just following your footsteps. <laughs> what yeah. I'd really like to do is if I'm not busy in November, I'd love to come out to Sarasota. That way we can hang out in familiar stomping grounds. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that'd be awesome. Just all of us together. Just do our yeah. do a show out at the booth. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That would be so awesome. Have you talked to Brandon, by the way, about the Chicago Museum? He's been there a bunch. He actually did some studying three. I have not, but I definitely will hit him up for it because uh, I, I, you know, now that you say that, I remember him bringing it up a couple of times, and it's just I've been so busy that I'm just like getting settled in, even just in my temporary abode that you see before you. It looks pretty that's good. My, that's my closet. Yeah, man. That looks <laughs> yeah. rad. Yeah, I feel like I'm back to being a college student living in a single room, but it's a temporary <laughs> thing, so not a big right. deal. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of, uh, that was one of the things that I think we all want to do sometime soon as a group is, and Chicago might be a good place to do it, is uh, hit up one of these museums all together. Um, yeah. So in the Met uh, as well in New York. So, so either New York or Chicago are easy to get to for all of us. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, so Colton, I don't know if you'd be able to join us, but it'd be cool if you could. Um, yeah. Have you been to any yeah. of the museums? Nope. Yeah, it's good to get um, your eyes on a lot of the original pieces and and it's probably different. Chicago is probably a little easier, but the Met is very difficult to get a piece of reserve to actually study ahead yeah. of time. Um, but uh, Chicago may not be as difficult, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I feel like it's yeah. perspective when everyone's like, oh, I want a historical piece, and then you hold an actual one, and you're like, oh, okay, now I know what they want. It's not what yeah. they want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and most historical pieces are not at all what a lot of people think they are. So. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but it, you know, it goes on both sides of the spectrum, right? Because a lot of people think that you know all long swords should be around three pounds, and it's like, well, I just held one that was over four, <laughs> and it wasn't big. Yeah. So, right. You know. So yeah, there it's there's it's all over the place. So, we're, you know, which is fun. Uh, I actually like enjoying making pieces that you know that aren't popular and that aren't that aren't made by the makers right now. And I was actually surprised. That's actually one of the reasons why I got this guy. I don't know if anyone makes this piece, the original. Uh, I don't know no anyone who does, and, I, and I'm surprised I'll be here now. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna take a stab at it at some point, but it'll probably be just a personal project for myself. So yeah, that's how we have it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So what else is coming up next? Um, well, I have this. Oh, we have a, another sword experience, and it's in uh, Tampa, so that'll be cool. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's in Tampa, oh, nice. uh, I'm doing the sword experience, and that's one of the reasons I'm in Dublin. And then we're shooting down to uh, Cork, I think, which is is that the town straight south of Dublin? I think. I, uh, I should know that because I'm in a couple of days, but um, <laughs> but then yeah, he's coming back. Uh, he's doing a bunch of other events around uh, Adrian Paul, that is, and mm -hmm. then he's. In Tampa, uh, so that'll be cool. That's September twenty fifth. Is that right? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, lots of cool stuff going on. Combat Con was awesome. I feel like I'm forgetting something. <laughs> it's because we didn't plan this episode at all. We're just no, like, we got to do an episode was, and then yeah. record. Oh crap! There's no topic. Here we we are. didn't think about it. No, oh, no. Also, a castle in the background. Oh, thanks to uh, Ox and what's the name of this wow. company? Ox and Plow, there you go. I got, we have been representing shirts all weekend. I got a couple different shirts. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been cool. Uh, I love their stuff. It's like super soft and, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. That, that's the probably the most important thing when you're making shirts for sure. Something that's comfortable. They're cool. Um, but yeah, like we didn't have a plan at all. We said, hey, I wanted to do an episode while I'm here in Scotland. and. And uh, I, I also forgot about the time difference. <laughs> so, so in uh, over by you guys in Utah, it's what four o'clock, five o'clock now almost. About five. Yeah, five. Exactly. Yeah, five till. Business just ended. Yeah, Thomas, you're hitting six, right? Or five? Yeah, six. six. Yeah, I'm on. We we now have three time zones in a row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Repeat. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, over here now. It's midnight, so. Mm -hmm. So you're keeping everyone awake. Got it. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> Although it's daylight here till 10:30, 11 at night. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. 11 o'clock. That makes out sense where you guys are. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Uh, yeah. 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 Thomas, make sure when you're looking into buying a house over there, you get one large enough to accommodate all of us in right. case. We're like, hey, oh, you know, yeah, like, yeah, Thomas absolutely. has got that together, and he's got enough land to build a shop on. Let's just go, go, uh, go live with Thomas. <laughs> yeah, I'll put you guys up in the shop, and that way you can be my little slot, uh, shop mate. Um, uh, cannot talk. Anyways, yes, I, I'm, I'm looking sloth for mermaids. Did you say yeah, shop, sloth mermaids? Sloth mermaids. <laughs> That's what I heard. Shop slop knop merpers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh no, so, <laughs> all that confused my brain. <laughs> yeah. You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking for a big enough place, man. Like, I'd love to have people coming down and just hanging out and doing stuff. Um, totally. Yeah. How, how far are you from Chicago again? You're only, what, two hours out? Chicago? Oh, no. Chicago is about four hours, four and a half hours out. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm literally, like, on the on the road to St. Louis. Like, you could walk oh. to it. So I'm oh, down oh. south. Gotcha. Yeah. Like have you taken any people. like gone around taking any pictures of the area just like uh for a lay of the land i've not while at the same time though i am going to start because i'm getting myself a really nice camera uh yeah. so i'm going to start taking a lot of really good photos of pretty much cool. everything but um but yeah no uh it, like i said it's just beautiful out here yeah that's awesome yeah. i'm looking out here uh in Edinburgh. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Man. Then, 
this is this haunt, this, I don't. We actually don't know what it is, but just inside town, there's. This, uh, so actually, I'm not in Edinburgh. I'm, I'm just outside of Edinburgh, outside of Edinburgh, in Musselburgh, the Musselburgh, uh, which is right on the water. Um, so it's mm. really pretty. Uh, so if you're looking at Edinburgh on a map, it's to the east. Yeah. Yeah. You got it right. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really pretty here. But just inside the little downtown-ish area, there is this beautiful building that looks like it was built. I don't know, probably a hundred years ago or more. Or, or, yeah, a lot more probably. And <laughs> we don't. It, is. it seems like it's empty. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I just want to buy that. It looks like it has land behind it. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Stake a claim. Just gonna, yeah, just start living in it and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just walk Yeah. Um, eye on this. You guys believe in flags, right? No? Great. Yeah. <laughs> <Flag>. <laughs> just put, a, put, a, put like a sterling works. armory flag down. Don't put like an American flag or anything. Yeah. Um, that might raise the wrong ideas. <laughs> Ooh, no, no. There is, a, there is a bunch of homes. Or not a bunch. There's a few homes that actually have flying American flags here. So, really? Wow. Yeah. Really. That's weird. I find I don't know why I find that super weird. That's yeah, weird. That yeah. Is weird. Yeah. 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 Christmas coming to town. Yeah. Let the flags confuse them. We when you land in this plane and you saw American flags. It's like, wait, did they just go in a circle? Like, ah, we got the American. <laughs> yeah. I, I can definitely see Harry, Harry Potter. Uh, like, you know, how you can tell they pulled the Harry Potter design. Yeah. Because it, it's very similar. Like the way the city's laid out and the way the castle looks, it all looks very much like Harry Potter. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty cool. How's the so tourist for, trade there? Is the tourist trade pretty good? It's been packed. So there's a, um, a big event happening next week, which is the Edinburgh Festival and Tattoo, as they call it. And oh, uh, it's oh. there's been a lot, of, a lot of French people here right now. Um, when I when I was flying over from Dublin, there was a whole group of guys from Dublin that were uh, what do they call it? A stag what? A stag stag what? So a stag party. Yep. Where I guess one guy is like the it guy, and he had to wear like he was wearing full uh, football gear or rugby gear. Yeah. Even on the plane, because he's the one everyone's making fun of. That's <laughs> 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 Oh, he's a bachelor. Is that what it is? Oh, I don't know. That's uh, I've never. So it's their first, yeah. um, but there was like twenty Irish guys coming in. They were all having a lot of fun on the plane. So that was good. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Tourists, uh, like the castle yesterday in Edinburgh was uh, hanging out with Sam. I don't you say you've never seen it that packed before. It was packed. Yeah. So it, it's okay. So, so apparently August in Edinburgh is very busy and mm -hmm. uh, busier than usual. Um, I'll say that. So, especially that you know, mm -hmm. COVID over here now. Sure. And, uh, so yeah, it's pretty busy here now. Tourists is pretty high. There was definitely more non-Scottish people than there were <laughs> Scottish people out there. So gotcha. it's pretty cool. Right. Oh. I was I was just really surprised by the amount of French people here. Lots, <laughs> lots of French. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, good. That's I drove cool. a lot. Yeah. The, uh, I'm very good at driving <laughs> on the. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I sure. sense a story. So yeah. I, I hear chuckling. Yeah, so very good at driving. So one hour drive down to Leeds, which I did. And before I was here, I drove from London up to Leeds, which is about the same, four and a half hours or more. Probably more. Uh, and I don't remember having problems in the roundabouts that I had this time. <laughs> so, really? So very good at driving <laughs> e. on the road. But as soon as I hit a roundabout, they just go the wrong direction, I think, you know? So, <laughs> oh, no. You're, America, meant to go, you know? you're meant to go clockwise, not counterclockwise. <laughs> right. So in America, we go counterclockwise. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it's every, every, <laughs> you work for NASA. <laughs> they also buried a rover. <laughs> So can't yeah. trust those guys. Yeah, in America, you just make a right. Where everything's a right. Where in you know Europe, it's everything's a left. I didn't but, drive in Ireland for that specific reason because I know I was gonna fuck it up <laughs> and die. Hey, <laughs> no, right? So, you, so here's my thing. Um, so there's roundabouts now with multiple lanes. 
And there's so many yeah. lanes in the roundabout, they have to put traffic lights in the roundabout. Which so I'm like, if you're putting like have a roundabout. Well, that's, yeah, that's... To, to not have traffic lights. Right, so yeah, that have... cancels, that's a double negative. Yeah, yeah. if you have to have traffic yeah. lights, get rid of the damn roundabout. <laughs> so... Right. But yeah, so I, I get <clears throat> like a B. So here's the other problem. Uh, and, and we were talking, so she has a friend uh, that's from Norway. Norway? Yeah. And she had the same issue. So if you're used to driving on the other side of the road and you're driving on the left now and you're, you're, but you're, you're in the right side of the car driving um, and you go, you know, when you're driving long distances on a straightish road, you kind of go on autopilot. So your body wants to align yourself to the other side of the road. So my car just drifts off the road as I'm driving. <laughs> so we had a road. So when I started drifting left, she would just be like, I'm dying, I'm dying, because <laughs> she's on the side. And then when I started drifting the other way, she was like, shit, 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 shit. So, <laughs> yeah. so that, uh, that was probably used every couple minutes as we were driving. <laughs> yeah, so, normal driving, I got about a B-ish. I'll grade myself at a B for roundabouts. She gave me an F minus. So. <laughs> that sounds about more accurate. Yeah. yeah, at least you didn't go throw it straight. I did. I did a couple times. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was one that I had a ramp too. I, I was thinking about jumping it. <laughs> but, <Jesus. laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. God. So yeah, it's, I, yeah. I, I I felt better last time, but I probably felt better last time because there wasn't somebody in the car telling me that no, you did that wrong. No, you did that wrong. You did that wrong. <laughs> or maybe there was no one in the wrong. car letting you know you were doing things wrong, which you were exactly the whole time. <laughs> exactly. There's just no one to refute you. Yeah, exactly. That's probably what happened. <laughs> yep. Yep. You probably yeah. caused so many pileups. <laughs> <laughs> There's a memorial still to your name. <laughs> yeah. How does that work? Uh, I, I don't even, I haven't even thought of that as far as licensing goes. Like you have an American driver's license. Are you still okay to drive in Europe? Yeah. So we, we did a bunch of research and I, I did this last time I came over. So as long as you're here, uh, America has a kind of reciprocity in terms of driver's license with the right. UK, but only for limited amounts of time. When you rent a car, the insurance is covered by the rental car place. So here we had to get, I had to get myself on Anna's insurance. And um, mm. that took an effort. <laughs> so, oh, oh, yeah. Um, it wasn't easy, but we, mm. we got it before we drove anywhere. Um, but yeah, other than the insurance issue, it's, you know, you can drive. No, you can only drive up to, I think, a year. Yeah, so if you're here for an extended time uh, and you keep coming back and it's extended time, after a year, they force you to get a driver's license here in, in Scotland. Gotcha. Hmm. Okay. See, I think it should be the opposite. It sounds like after a year, you'd know what you were doing. Whereas right. up to that <laughs> year, you definitely have no fucking clue. You'd need a special permit to go, you've completed our driving tests. And I'd love to see the numbers and statistics behind uh, how many of those insurance uh, uh, collisions are American caused. You know yeah, I mean? If, if I mean, insurance covers you idea. the entire time. Yeah. It doesn't drive mm -hmm. side, or the other side of the road. Because right. uh, UK and Ireland are the only two countries that do it. Right. So actually, there's huh. probably, I think, another Australia, maybe? The other I can't remember. Yeah, another uh, Australia. But yeah, it was, it was, it was fun. Um, I I would say I recommend it, but study up ahead of time. <laughs> so, right. Everything manual. We just practice oh, yeah. over here driving down the wrong side of the road. No big deal. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Provo doesn't matter. Yeah, Spanish yeah. Fork, it definitely doesn't matter. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Interstate happens all the time. <laughs> and uh, thanks to Josh too, for driving for Combat Con. That was a beautiful drive. I hadn't done that before. So Yeah, man. That mouth of the canyon where you cross through the tip of Arizona, that's a that's a sweet ride. Yeah. Imagine doing that cuz there was it wasn't that big of a mountains, but it was a bunch here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but on the wrong side of the road and having roundabouts. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to even think about it. Yeah. Boy, that's good. So, <laughs> yeah, that was beautiful. Um, How are the roads in and in, uh, in Edinburgh? Is it um? Do they have like larger roads or smaller roads? Oh, they're tiny. So the interstates are normal gotcha. size, but yeah, everything yeah. here is like I, right. I feel like I'm a giant person. <laughs> yes, so, like, yeah. Everything here is tiny. 
Uh, Rowan's yeah. car. Uh, toilets. She said. She said. Uh, yeah, toilets. Oh, toilets. They don't know how to. They don't know how to make toilet seats here. I have not sat on toilet seats. <laughs> <laughs> so you sit down and goes whoa, and yeah, you yeah. fly off. And yeah, it's not. <laughs> So. Yeah, I Ireland for me was that was something I had to get used to. I always felt like I was going to die driving anywhere because the roads were so small. There's no way it could accommodate two vehicles. And it was <laughs> there was always a ditch or a stone wall that had been there since the creation of every religion. Uh, right. You know, and I was like I'm definitely going to to die or knock over something va yeah. invaluable. And then going in the bathroom and like not being able to fit inside the bathroom and then sit on the <laughs> toilet and it was like you were sitting on a like a, a mouse just like, <laughs> I know. like and, I'm, I'm hey. not, I'm not and then since you're american and you're like oh i hope that uh that that plumbing system chokes all that all the way down <laughs> uh. i don't want to get to that part of the episode <laughs> yeah. for some reason they have street parking but you know in the u.s when you have street parking they they give you space on the side of the street to park your car mm. well they don't do it here right they what they do is they just they just mark off a parking spot in the middle of the lane. So if there's a car parked there, you have to drive yeah. around it, go into the other lane on the other side that's on to un oncoming traffic. That's that's fucking weird. Uh, yeah. So that's the thing. Yeah. So the high the the highway doubles as a parking lot. The street yeah. doubles as a parking lot. The normal roads, yeah. They don't do it on the highways, but normal roads. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah I like to keep crazy. our imagination that it's on the highway too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're doing you're doing like sixty, and then there's there's that car just parked. And I was like, yeah, just yeah. like pull pulled over. This is over this now. is my exit. I live like right there. I'm just gonna park on the highway. I'm just gonna hop on highway the thinking street. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh man. So yeah, uh, I don't. Uh, my brain's starting to go a little dead here. We're hit, about to hit an hour. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's a good. Yeah. Time. Yeah. So I wish. Um, so one thing I I wanted to say. I hope uh, Nathan and then Arms and Armor can make it to Combat Con uh, coming up please. next. Yeah, please um, come out. Yeah, he was missed, and then um, yeah, like I, it's hard to believe it just it went by so fast. <laughs> so <laughs> you spend all that time, and you get there, and you know you got Vegas brains. So you're like, shit. Checking into the hotel Wednesday night, man, we're not checking out till Sunday. That's a long time. And, you know, like, huh, Wednesday. And then you fall asleep and you wake up Saturday night and you're like, oh, crap. It's already gone. <laughs> yeah, you know? it's already yeah. Wow. So it went by pretty quick. And uh, hopefully, yeah. uh, Colton and uh, Thomas can join us next time. Definitely. And uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. definitely have some stuff. Yeah. And uh, so we got a lot of shows coming up. So if you're, if you're following us here uh, on YouTube, um, you know, there's links below to our Facebook page and stuff if you haven't been there. And uh, we have a couple new series going right now, too. So we have the Oak Shop Topology. Um, I don't know if you guys, so far I'm just filming that myself, but if you guys want to jump in and help. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll film some stuff. <laughs> we want the, uh, <laughs> the War Bear Topology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this is uh, the sword bear, the sword. <laughs> But the coolest the thing is, part, and this is the pony part. Yeah, but, those videos so far have gotten the most messages and comments. So, uh, okay. ever. so yeah, um, not as. I mean, they're, they're still pretty new, so they don't have as many likes yet. But um, yeah. they're catching up. Quick. So it Very seems cool. like it's wanted. Um, so yeah, we'll keep doing that. But we're starting to get to the. So I've already filmed a couple more of those, um, but we're, I'm starting to get to the ones when I get back home. That I have to record, but I don't know those types that well, <laughs> so I got to hit the books and read up on them before I make those videos. Yeah, research. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that'll be interesting. It's also a lot of types that. So originally, I didn't want to. I had no interest in making those, but now that I'm going back and reading them, I'm like, oh, maybe I do want to make one of these. Yeah. So yeah, it should be fun. Um, okay. So yeah, we have that series going, and then. Um, we have another one I'm about to do too, but I, I'm blanking on what, what it was. So. It's very important though. How it's made is done. I, I need to fill that with something else. And, you know, I haven't, I don't, so the oak shot won't go that long, right? It's only a few episodes. Um, so what you could do as an idea, um, we can talk about it more off, is just now that you've done the oaken shot, you go back and make one, a video for each of those. Like here's a blade made on that style. That's an idea. Yeah, there's good. However cool. many, yeah. Yeah, that might be a good idea. 
So oh, you could do a do a shop etiquette, do a shop etiquette video showing you kind of how we be, think we should clean up your things, what things shouldn't uh, be on fire. Chris's episode is thirty seconds long, and it consists of him <laughs> walking to his house and turning off his light. I'm gonna That's do one. On, I'm gonna do one on Oakshot typology, but it's all gonna be a crock of shit, and I'm gonna be called Egbert Oakshat. As, <laughs> I'm gonna look like Sigmund Freud with just like little bits of hair on the side, little round glasses. I don't know. Just do an bit. oak shot where you just go outside, find an oak tree, and shoot it. It's 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 good. Yeah, it's gonna be a brick with a sword hilt on the bottom of it. <laughs> just weird. I'm gonna make the stupidest things and reclassify them as the stupidest stuff possible. That could be fun. You know, do it. Yeah, it'd be right. That would be fun. Well, that's what we're all about, right? We gotta make. Yeah, yeah. gotta... Swords and fun. Chris yeah. can keep it serious, and Josh is here to make fun of it at all. That's it. I mean, it's a good. It's there's, a polar. There's the entire dynamic. Chris, yeah. Chris is all science, and I'm all eyeball measurements. You know, Chris is <laughs> classifies it into a very technical broad, and I go, "This is good." So <laughs> yeah. it's it's a dynamic that works, though. It's a very very um, uh, Aussie and Harriet friendship. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and uh, we're expanding too, which is great. So we were the four of us here, uh, you know, doing lots of cool stuff. So, yeah. 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 All right. Well, um, yeah. Do you guys have anything else uh, before we step off here? No, yeah, I think we're yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually fading pretty quick. <laughs> so, <it's>, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Do your do do your do your uh, outro, and and we'll all do ours, and then we'll call it a night. Yep. Yeah. So um, again. Uh, I'll start with mine. Yeah. So uh, if you want to look for it, any of our stuff. So again, uh, Sterling Armory, and this is, a, I just remember something else I want to talk about. Uh, so this comes up every, actually every convention and every combat con. Uh, for us at Sterling Armory, we're not a full on production company. And that's what we get asked. No. About. So yes. yeah, we got, I got, actually got sent four or five different messages saying, Hey, can I get, you know, two of these and three of those? And I'm like, well, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like, so you make it, um, you know, it's a one of a kind piece. And, and, and that's how we're still there now. We might get to the point where we do production runs of, say, a sure. certain piece. We're not there yet. Uh, I don't know if we ever do want to get there. It depends on which way we go. And um, we do, it'll be a limited run, I imagine. Like, we might yeah. do yeah. one production a year. We should do, we should, what's, what's Latin for? We don't take commissions. <laughs> that could be our, like, Wait, little no, banner. No, 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 Sterling Armory. Commissions. Yeah. <laughs> So, so when you see pieces that we post, if we have something available, I mean, that's a one of a kind piece. So grab it uh, if you if you like it. Um, you know, um, we can uh, and I we get the, at least I get the question a lot. Hey, can you remake this piece? And I yeah. I always say mm, uh, I can remake yeah, it. I don't want to. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I don't want to, or it's not going to be exact if I remake right. it. Right. Very few pieces that I will like. So the piece. Uh, that sold the highest end piece that sold uh, at Combat Con was the Gothic sword from the Royal Armory. Mm -hmm. I love that. And each time I make it, I give a little different tweak to it. But the one I just sold was probably the most accurate to the original. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'll make one like that again. Um, mm -hmm. But it's even that was still. I mean, it was slightly different than the original. Uh, you know, because I'm making it myself. So, um, but yeah, so. That's, so when you look at Sterling Army, and the reason why I brought that up is when you're on our Facebook page and you see stuff on our Facebook page and you see our work there, uh, just know that, you know, it, it's our handwork. It's all done by hand. It, it's uh, done by us. And uh, it's not a production house. Uh, we actually, did you guys see the email from the group in, uh, I think they were in China or Pakistan, where they're asking us to be resellers for their stuff. And I was like, no, I haven't seen that. No. I get that on Instagram every so often. Every area of self on Instagram, they'll I'll I'll get something very similar, where it's like we'd like to carry your product or we'd like to help out boost your page, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah, it's crazy. So yeah, that's where you can find us. So just if you see something you like, send us a message uh, on the Facebook page um, and, or here on YouTube. Uh, you can you know just leave some comments below, and then Sterling Armory has the Instagram now too. And uh, although right now the Instagram, I believe, is only my blades. So I want to get a lot of, of Josh's blades up there as well. Uh, Colton's blades. And then Thomas, get some of your stuff up there when you're up and running. And that way it's not my pieces because that's I want the Instagram to be all of us there as well. Yeah, man. So anything, I anything I post on Instagram or Facebook, feel free to 
steal and sample and just repost Same. it on your Instagram yeah. or your Facebook? I am not good with Instagram. So there's got to be a way to kind of share other posts. Sure. Right? Yeah, you can regram yeah. that. I think there's an app where you can regram it. Uh, I don't I'm know. Guessing. <laughs> so, yeah, we got to get Sierra to help Thomas, Thomas, the IT nerd, the uh, Sterling Armory IT nerd. Okay, let me put my glasses uh, on. You can talk to me like a nerd. Nice. All right, you know what? Oh, you <laughs> fucking nerd. <laughs> You're in charge of Instagram from now on. Oh, Actually, it's your own. Go into, go into Chris's phone and my phone and just keep uploading stuff from our phones. All right, hold on. Just do that. Yeah. Hacking's done. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Damn, he's good. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, yeah my outro. So, Thomas, you're up. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you can't find me because I don't want to be found. Um, but if you want to get a hold right. of me, you can always reach us through the Facebook page. I sometimes look at it also. Just tell, him that, tell Chris that you're looking for me and I'll pop on. Um, other than that, I'm Thomas, and one day I will be more than Thomas. Yeah, so there are some renters up around your area, right? Yeah, St. Louis starts September. <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go visit. I, I visited last year. Yeah, check out do some reconnaissance. They, they have yeah, so uh, they have one. They have a they have one blacksmith, like like he has his forge and everything there, but they don't have any sword makers that I saw. Right. They have a reseller though. So right. I'll That's check that out. So that area, and you're interested in our blades, Thomas will be up there now. So um, when he's up and running making yeah. blades, it'll be a good good person to reach out to if you're looking for a good blade. So definitely. All right, Colton, you're up. Yeah, uh, Colton from Copperthorn. Uh, you can find me Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and on the Sterling Armory page. So yeah, see, they know how to do it. Because Sierra knows how to run all that stuff. Yeah, I don't know. You see, they know how to. I don't know how to do it. Sierra knows how to do yeah. it. So. <laughs> Instagram is pretty basic. It's pretty simplistic. Facebook's a bit more involved and broad. Live, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Yeah. I don't know. All right, Josh Warbear. I'm Josh Warbear. Josh Warbear. Oh, you can. Hmm? You didn't spell it different. Oh yeah, no, I left it. You know. <laughs> I thought about doing War Bear Bear America, but I couldn't make it work in time. I was like, eh, America. screw it. Yeah. I'm Josh Warbear. Uh, you can find me at Warbear underscore Armory on my Instagram or uh, Joshua Von Warbear on my Facebook um, or Josh Warbear at Sterling. Is it Warbear? Warbear at SterlingArmory.com. Yeah. I just realized, did you lose? So all the likes that you had for your prior page, did they transfer over or did you lose all that? Hey man, you know that's circle of life. That's for the jury to decide. I don't know. So, I don't think either of those statements apply. Oh, you're right. Uh, I think I, I think all tags from now on uh, switch from Dark Archer design to War Bear Armory. That's I know that was a thing I had because I, I changed my Dark Archer design Instagram to Joshua Von War Bear once upon a time, and I switched it right back because people were like. Crap! How do I tag you? You're not there anymore, and I'm like, oh damn it! I'm just this is easier. But, but is it you know same page? You just changed the name, or is it a new page? Yeah, same same page, same page. The names change. Everything's still there. So oh, like you know, cool. Huh. Alrighty. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks again, uh, everyone, for calling in. Uh, thanks to you guys for calling in. I you know this is a very last minute thing, but it's been fun, and uh, yeah. and that's for the Have audience. Fun. Yeah, I thought Scotland. Don't drive yeah. anymore. Just hand the hand the car over to Hannah. She can take Just it from here. Pull the steering wheel off. Hand to Hannah. Let her figure it out from there. Yes. I'm sure it'll yeah. be fine. Yeah, yeah uh, for driving to me. I'm good. <laughs> so, all my Just driving. Keep in mind. Keep in mind that if you're a passenger, you're technically in an American driver's seat, so that still counts as I, a win. You can yeah. just yeah. Yeah. get a get a cardboard yeah. steering wheel. Yeah, yeah. Just pretend, man. It feels like there's some pedals there, like and there's yeah, not. yeah. Really weird. I bet, um, yeah. yeah, like uh <clears throat> I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> but yeah, it's been um Goodbye. <laughs> Yeah, last <laughs> my mom, yeah, my you're, gonna, you're gonna say stay sharp, sterling armor. There you go. Oh there you go. All right. Yeah, not stay bad, sharp. The shirt will be on sale next year and <laughs> all proceeds go to us. Oh, I thought I was gonna yeah. say so if you are if you're on our Facebook page and now you get to see like behind the scenes, because this is kind of a how we all hang out behind the scenes. So yay, that's what we'll call this episode. 
Sterling Armory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. All righty, guys. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Later. Bye. Have a good night. Bye.